In this lesson, we're going to learn how to create nodes inside of ICE as well as what particles are. All right, so here's where we left off, and I've just opened up 06 Begin. So we learned how to edit and connect and disconnect nodes, but how do we add these nodes into our ICE tree? Well, to do this, we need to show the panel that lets us create nodes. So let me minimize, or excuse me, maximize my ICE tree just so we can see a little bit more of this panel. Now, immediately, I've seen people recoil at horror on the sheer number of nodes that are available uh, over here on the left. Now, don't worry. We do not need to know what every single node does to be a successful ICE artist. Many of these nodes have very specific and very limited uses, so don't worry about going in and memorizing every single node in every single folder here, because really, we're only going to need a small subset of these various nodes to essentially get things done here inside of ICE. Now you'll notice there are two tabs here. There's the Tool tab, which allows us to essentially access the building blocks of various nodes. And there's also the Task tab, which has a lot of presets uh, created to more easily work with various things in ICE. So you can see right now I'm in the Particle Tasks, but we can switch that over to Deformation. And if you're using a newer version of Softimage, you might see a few more different tasks you can access. So let's say we want to randomly set the color of our particles on a mission. So we can go searching through these and look for something that looks like what we're looking for. And if we go to Tool, you'll notice there's a color folder. Here, there are some options here, like Randomize Color. Now, if you didn't know that, it would be difficult to find these things or find various nodes inside of this panel. So there's a great search bar up here at the very top, and we can do something like type in Color. And now we're going to get every single node that has the word Color inside of its name. So this is a really great way to find new nodes uh, that are somewhat similar to what you're looking for. So let's come down here and let's random or grab the randomize color and drop this in. So to add a node, simply left click and drag it from this left panel into your ice tree. And wherever you drop it is where it will stay. Now if you created it accidentally, uh, you can either hit delete and that will remove it. Or you can really just leave it floating around. There really isn't too much overhead if a complex node is not connected into anything. ICE essentially ignores disconnected nodes. So now let's plug this into our emitter. So I'm going to display this so we can see where our color port is. And uh, it's great and very easy to see where this needs to be plugged in. You'll notice that this is a red output. And since red outputs, or any color output, can only be plugged in to the same color, let's now plug this randomized color into the color port. OK, so let's rewind and hit play to see what happens with our simulation. Hit play. And you'll notice now that all of our particles begin with a random color. Now this is a little bit uh, not too pretty, so we can of course double click and come in and edit this randomized color. So I'm just going to give this a nice uh, lighter blue here, and I'm going to decrease the variance a little bit. So while we're still going to get somewhat random colors, you'll notice that these are a lot more controlled rather than having a very high variance. Of course, if you really want to go wild, you can of course, increase this variance and really uh, get some uh, colorful results. Now I'm going to decrease this back down to uh, <laughs> bring it back into uh, attractive colors. Now you'll notice that even though we're changing this, this simulation has not reset. So whenever we make a change inside of our ice tree, those changes are essentially made from the point or the time they're made forward and that is until you hit play again. And now you'll notice these are being updated with the current values. So a great thing about ICE is we can actually come in and we can animate any of these uh, attributes over time, and you'll notice they update and change in mid-simulation. So this is one of the key strengths of ICE, is that you can really easily and quickly create a bunch of tests or come in and modify the values 
as the simulation is actually running. Okay, so let me just actually increase this luminance just a little bit further, saturate it back up so we can get some of those nice colors back into our system. Okay, great. So now let's briefly talk about what a particle is. And we'll be able to see this a little bit easier by taking a look at the specific particle nodes that we have access to. So I'm going to clear my search history, or my search, and jump back to the task and my particles. Now a particle is essentially a point in space that is being tracked. Now in our case, we have this little sphere attached to our particle, or our particle's shape, as we can see here, is a sphere. Now we can modify, of course, what kind of particles we send out. We could send out boxes. Uh, we could send out any sorts of things, capsules, cones. Uh, there's a lot of different shape types that we can send out. We can even plug our custom shape or a uh, different shape, such as a bean or a basketball or essentially any piece of geometry into this shape node or into this shape port. And then our particles will pick up the attributes of whatever we plug into this shape. For now, let's just keep it on spheres because they render uh, pretty nicely, actually. Now, there's a lot you can do with particles, and particles are the best way to create natural, pheno or natural pheno phenomena such as fire, smoke, uh, dust, dirt, anything that requires a lot of tiny pieces is really well done or best done with particles here inside of ICE. Now again, you'll notice there is a lot of different nodes we have access to. But as I said before, uh, don't let this be daunting. Uh, just naturally come in, play with a couple nodes a day, and uh, search through our node reference library. We've documented quite a few of these various nodes. And uh, sort of getting back to particles, you'll notice here in the getters, here is essentially all of the information that a particle is tracking every single frame. So a particle has an age, so we can tell these particles to get larger as they get older, or maybe get smaller and fade out in the case of smoke. We can, of course, get change their color. We can change how heavy they are, which depends on how they interact with other objects. And we can also directly edit their rotation, position, and scaling, as well as the size of these particles. Now, as you'll notice, there are quite a few more getters uh, that are available to us. And so ICE is uh, actually a pretty incredible tool uh, for editing particle simulations and getting them to do what you want. Uh, it's probably one of my favorite tools for actually editing particles and setting up these kinds of simulations. Because you can get, um, or you can just throw together a bunch of different nodes and really quickly and easily create uh, an appealing animation uh, pretty much in a lot faster than you could in many other applications. Now, if you're interested in how we created this simulation or this uh, ice tree, we go over this in step-by-step -step detail in the Getting Started with Ice in Softimage course available with our subscription. So let's now talk about the movement of these particles, and that is primarily dependent on the forces that we are exerting on them. So in the next lesson, let's take a look at the various forces we have available to us here inside of ICE, how we can edit them, and how we can bring them all together with our particles.